안녕하세요. Hi everyone. 저는 고엘이라고 합니다. My name is 고엘이. And yesterday I created a video on vowels and diphthongs. So I thought it would be useful to create another one on all of the consonants in 한국어 or Korean. Just as a brief overview, in case you're interested, Korean used to be written using 한자 or Chinese characters. And this is the Chinese character for Chinese characters. But after 1443, we have the invention of Hangul, which made it much easier to learn Korean and write and disseminate information. And that's the system we use today, albeit with a few differences from when it was first created. For those of you that like to know terms, we have the one for letter, Zamo, vowel, Moum, and diphthong, Yijung, Moum. And then the word for consonants, Zalun. So let's get started on learning the Zalun today. Just as I said, Korean is quite a scientific language, at least in terms of the way it's written. So for consonants, we can separate it into five categories. And this has to do with the way you manipulate your mouth to pronounce the sounds. And I found this particularly useful when learning Korean. And also, when I took Linguistics 101, it all clicked and made so much more sense and my pronunciation got so much better just for knowing this, so hopefully it'll help you too. Firstly, we have velar consonants. So, velar just means you're using the back of your tongue, like the sound K or G in English, K or G. In Korean, this is called a alum, a velar sound, alum, with these Chinese characters. So, just, again, like a K or a G. Alveolar is called a sorum in Korean, and that's the character for tongue, so it's a tongue sound. You make these sounds with the tip of your tongue on the ridge of the upper teeth. Kind of like that th sound, if you imagine it like that. Bilabial means sunum with these characters, and it's when you nearly close your lips to make a sound, like you do with a P or a B or an M. Bilabial. And this is an example that we're going to learn in a minute. This is the letter for M in Korean. If you pronounce the word M, ma, say ma, and look at where your mouth is, it should be in a similar shape to this. So that should make that one easy to memorize in terms of how to write it at least. Then we have dentals. This means that the tongue is against the upper front teeth. And this is called a chium. Chium. Glottal means you use your glottis. You're using your throat for this, kind of like the H in hat. These are called hulun. Hulun. So, enough of that. Let's get started with the different consonants. These are all the velars. So remember the back of the tongue, like K or G in English, an awum. So, we have three. Just like in English, when we have the letter D and we're telling people which letter we're referring to, we don't just go da. We go D. We add vowels to it. And then we do the same thing in Korean. And these are the standard romanizations for those sounds, for those letters. So, the first one, Giyok. Giyok. You can see here, Giyok. In the first position, it kind of sounds like a G. But if we put it in another position, it takes on the sound of a K. The best way of learning how and when to say a G or a K is just through listening to other people speak. That's the easiest way of learning, through TV, through music, whatever you enjoy listening to. So, giok, g, k, giok. And we see it in words in Korean like, besides, kedaga, kedaga, kedaga. Then we have an aspirated velar consonant. Aspirated just means there's going to be a puff of air, like p, puff. And this is called a kiyup, kiyup as you can see here, kia. And this is a great word to learn the sound with, the word for cake, cake, cake. And I've also used it here, but it also has this consonant in it within the word for elephant. You can see that I've taken a giok and I put another one and smush them together. This is known as sang giok. Sang just meaning that there are two of these, we're duplicating them. Sang giok, sang giok. So this is a slightly harder sound. We're really emphasizing that there are two consonants there. I'll create another video on this because I think it's quite a hard concept when you're first learning Korean. But just to give you an example in the word for elephant, 
코끼리 코끼리 and I saw of this example as well for the kia because every single consonant here is aspirated so it'll help you with that concept of aspiration and it means computer 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 코끼리 those are all of the velars I suggest maybe pausing the video and going back and trying to replicate the way I say it. I make it a little easier. Then we've got alveolar consonants. Remember, this is pronouncing them with the tip of your tongue on the ridge of your upper teeth. This is all of them. First, we have an N sound known as nian. 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 And there are a few exceptions to the way you pronounce letters in Korean, depending upon what comes before or what follows them. I don't think if you're learning the letters right now, you should just kind of skip over that and wait until you get to that lesson because it's kind of complicated. But you'd see that, for example, in a word like confusion, apt, right? Hollan, Hollan takes on an L. Hollan, and words like Honza meaning alone, Honza, or Neye meaning tomorrow, Neye, Nian. Then we have a D or a T sound, as you can see here. Digat, 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 and we see that in words like the one for responsibility, tamdang, tamdang, or each and every, mada, mada. Then we have an aspirated, kind of like I showed you here, and the word for computer, komputa. That's the aspirated t in Korean, t, and then we call it tiat, tiat. We see it commonly in words like Saturday, toyoir, toyoir, and in verbs like to take care of, matta, matta. But here, when it's in the final position, we hold the aspiration in, we don't puff it out. Matta, toyoir, as a comparison for that. Then we have the L or the R. So I don't know if any of you know, if you have an interest in Japan or Japanese and Korean. You might know that when that's your native language and you're trying to learn English, it's very hard to distinguish between an L and an R sound. And this is why. In Korean and in Japanese as well, it's combined into one consonant, known as lir. Lir. You can see here it's written in both an R and an L when we romanize it. And this is seen in words like with, lo, lo, or the word for two, dur, dur. Or my favorite snack, ramen, ramyeon, ramyeon. So when I was in Korea and I wanted to add ramen to my soup, for instance, in a restaurant, I would say ramyeon chuga hejuseyo, ramyeon chuga hejuseyo, ramyeon. Then we've got another double consonant, and that's a double of the digat we saw here, sang digat, sang digat, sang digat. We see it in words like also, dohan, dohan, or to come with someone, dara, or the word for daughter, dar, dar. Then we have the bilabial sounds. So these are when you nearly close your lips to make a very soft consonant, like M, B, P, for instance. The first one I have here is called miyum, miyum. It's just like an M, miyum, miyum. And we see it in words like the one for, of course, mulon, mulon. Or mal, meaning words or horse. And I know that sounds a bit funny that it can mean the same thing, but they have completely different Chinese characters that they're based on. Mal. Then in words like mom, omma, omma. Then we have a BP sound, biop. B yep. B yep. See it in words like the one for method, bang bop, bang bop. Or the one for food, pop, pop. Very important word. We have an aspirated P like we saw in the word for computer, computer, p, with a puff of air. P yep. P yep. We see it in the word for need, pilio, pilio. The one for to grasp, like a hard concept, pa, pa. And then the word for papaya, papaya, papaya. Then we have 
the double piop from this piop we call it sang piop sang piop we use it in words like the one for laundry balle balle in a verb like to pick something botta botta in a word like the one for fast balle balle so hopefully that helps then I know there are a lot for this one. We have all of the dentals. So dental, tongue against the upper front teeth. The first one is an S or a T sound, depending upon where it comes in a word. So you can see here, if it comes first, we have an S like she, and then you can see here based on romanization, it becomes a T at the end. Ot, she ot, she ot. We have it in words like the one for Wednesday. Su yo ir, su yo ir. The ones for insa, meaning an introduction, insa, like insa hei juseyo, introduce yourself, o soge, an introduction, soge, also in words like the one for success, songgong, songgong, and as a t in a word like yegit kori, the one for topic, then we have a j sound, that also becomes a t at the end, much like shiot, and it's called jiot, we use it in words like to prepare, junbi, Junbi, like junbi hada, to prepare. Junbi. The word for offer, jian. Jian. Or the word for strength or advantage, jangjom. Jangjom. Next, we have a ch sound, a ch. Like chi it. Chi it. You notice these all become t at the end. Chi it. We use it in words like the one for friend or friend. Chingu. Chingu. Or to find, chatta, chatta, using this, uh, here, as a T, chatta. And also, in terms of adding, chuga, chuga. Next, we have a double shield, known as sang shield, sang shield. We use it in words like sled, like sliding through the snow, sorme, sorme. Words like rice, Sai, sai, and words like fight, which we often see in dramas. Sawum, sawum. Then we have a double J, a double jiet, known as a sang jiet, sang jiet, and we see it in words like irritation, da zang, da zang, and words like crush or one-sided love, dak sarang, dak sarang. So. We're on to our final category. And these are known as glottal consonants. So remember using the glottis, using our throat, is in the H in hat. This one is probably a slightly more complicated one because in the first position it's silent. It has no sound whatsoever. But when we use it at the end of a block of letters, it takes on an NG. So we'd say E ng. E ng. Here just taking the vowel sound and ignoring this, E, is just standing in for nothing. And here, as well, no sound, and then we pronounce the vowel, and then at the end, we have an NG, ng, e ng. We see it in words like the one for dog, kang a ji, kang a ji, kang a ji. The one for influence, yong hyang, yong hyang. I like the one for cat, goyangi, goyangi. Finally, we have an H sound. So we call it he. He. Huh. We use it in words like to identify or check. Huagin. Huh. Huagin. To do. Hada. 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 Words like hakseng, meaning student. So you technically are a hanguga. Hanguga. Korean language student, haksing. Then finally, we have an example like this one to touch, tatta, tatta. We don't really pronounce this at all, tatta. So I hope that introductory video was helpful. As always, let me know in the comments what you think. Thank you.